I first came to fish on here really when the fish were spawning on the island lake. I was concentrating on that last year and the fish spawned a lot on there. It was constantly being open and shut and uh, in between times I was looking for somewhere else to fish and this was the obvious place. It was next door and I didn't know too much about it really but it was somewhere to get the rods out so I came on here and actually ended up finding out what really nice place it was. The people are nice on here for a start, really friendly nice people and um, yeah and the fish are lovely as well. So when they were spawning on the island that again I came back here and it was a pretty miserable sort of weekend, rainy and overcast, pretty carpy conditions. Uh, but what surprised me, there was no one here. I could see a bivy on the far side, but all of the car park swims and here where I am now, the helipad, they were all empty and I did wonder, I had to find out first whether it was shut here as well. So, you know, I got in touch with a couple of people, bailiffs, and uh, it was actually open. It just happened that there was no one here. So I came straight into the helipad and set up. I didn't know much about the swim as such, other than I knew it was a good swim. I knew it did produce, you know, good fish um, throughout the early part of the year, certainly. So yeah, it was a bit of a no-brainer jumping in here, at least to start with. And yeah, it was it was my first chance to actually have a go with the bushwhacker poles. You know, of course the island lake had been all boat work, which I was loving. Uh, on here, there's no boats. I mean, there's there's a couple of spots certainly by the bridge where if you stand on the bridge in the spring you see the fish all the time so that was a, an obvious place to try and get one and yeah it's a bit tricky sort of poking it around the corner but you can do it so that was what was looking like going to be my banker rod um, you're only allowed to use two rods that time of year you can use three later on from sort of November onwards for my other rod I decided to try something totally different and I found a nice clear area. There's quite a bit of weed in this sort of area, but I did find a nice clear spot literally just straight out in front of the swim. Uh, just f about 10 footish, something like that, just donk, went straight down. So I thought, well, you know, give that a go. And uh, two different areas spread quite a long way apart, um, but yeah, two different areas to try. My tactics were basically the same as what I had been using, which was little Scopex Squid Snowmans on slip D rigs. And yeah, difference, um, slightly light leads because I was just dropping them with the, the bushwhacker and it's short range as well. So there was no need for anything more than about two ounce really. A few freebies, not many, six, eight, ten freebies, uh, some Scopex Squid pellet and the mixed seeds, small mixed seeds and a bit of hemp. You know, so it's a little mixture in there, but not much. A couple of handfuls probably in the bushwhacker. And that just goes out and it's dropped and it, there's a nice little presentation in one little spot. It actually didn't take long to get the first bite. And yeah, no surprise, it was, it was the one round by the trees towards the bridge. And uh, yeah, absolute nutter of a take. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, over time, I've lost quite a bit of my footage. I pressed a few wrong buttons and it all disappeared and I've never got it back. Um, but yeah, so you can't see the take or the fight, but it was pretty hectic stuff. Uh, it wasn't a big fish. It was, it was quite a long, sort of wildy shaped common. Um, I think there's a few of those in here and yeah, so it proved to be, yeah, I had, I had two or three bites actually quite quick, all on the same rod, all in the same spot. And there were all these um, little commons. So yeah, I know there's a lot bigger and better fish in here, but it was nice to get a bit of action and uh, well, get the session going for sure. Yeah, by the, the following morning, um, I'd had, yeah, three or four bites, I think, by then. And uh, they'd all come, up, come off that same rod, which it wasn't that surprising, really. It was where I expected the bites to come from. Um, but eventually, the, the rod out in the open water, that, that rattled off. And uh, it was nice to get one from a different area. And, yeah, it wasn't uh, the prettiest fish. It, it turned out to be a, a fish affectionately known as wonky chops <laughs> for obvious reasons um, but yeah he was a decent decent size 27 he, he has been up around 30 pound normally so you know a fish is a fish isn't it I was still pleased to see him I had a couple more bites that day I had another one off the open area spot which was a bream actually a big old bream there's some great big slabs in here um, and yeah one one again another a bigger common a 20 pound common off of the, the right hand rod round the corner. But um, through the night, that rod stayed quiet. And I was a, a little bit puzzled by that because I, I was expecting that rod to, to carry on going off, obviously. And uh, it hadn't, you know, so I got up in the morning and um, it, it looked great for a bite, it really did. You know, there was a bit of rain about, it was overcast, a cloud really low, low pressure and all that. I thought, well, I can't believe that rod hasn't gone off. So I picked it up oh, and I could feel it, it was in weed. I dropped it and, you know, so obviously the presentation just wasn't right. Got that one in, got the bushwhacker back out, shipped it out, slightly, just a little bit further, another three foot or something, dropped it. And uh, yeah, that, that was obviously the thing to do anyway, because a bit, it was only about 15 minutes later uh, and off it went and well, if the, if the last fish hadn't been a particular looker, this one was one of the very, very special ones. This is absolutely gorgeous. Funny enough, it looked good all night. We've had brilliant conditions, wet and windy, blowing down this way. I couldn't believe it when I hadn't had a take. And I thought I'd just better check that rod because a fish jumped over there, not far from where the bait was. I thought I'd better check it. It's in a ball of weed. So I thought, right, better get it out there properly. Got it out there. 15 minutes, it went off with this one. Just shows you, doesn't it? Anyway, I don't know what fish this is, but it's obviously, obviously a known one. It's absolutely gorgeous. Just check that out, eh? Look at them scales. What an absolute feature of fish. That'd do, wouldn't it? It's a wet and windy night, big puddle under my bed chair. But um, that made it all worthwhile. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow. We'd like this, isn't it? Anyway, I still had one night to go in the swim. You're allowed to do 
three nights in a, a swim on here. Uh, you can move, move to another swim, you can stay on the lake, but you can't stay in the same swim more than three days. But three days was enough for, for me anyway, so I had that one night to go. And yeah, the, the action was tailing off a little bit, but they were still there, still there for sure. And I, I knew that if I dropped it short, I was in the weed. And if I went a little bit further, it was just enough to get it on that clear spot. And yeah, on the final night, I had two fish off, off that rod. And they were two lovely linears. Uh, one was, I don't know if I weighed it or not, I can't remember now, but it was up around 20 pound, 18, 20 pound, lovely fish. But the second one was a real cracker, 2712, and a lovely dark linear, beautiful scales, perfect condition, lovely and dark. You know, it's one of those, there's so many of them like that in here, and they are absolute crackers. So I think I'd ended up with about 10 bites, 10 fish that session, and uh, only the bream and wonky chops had come from out in front. All the rest had come from the tree line around by the bridge so you know that speaks for itself that's where they wanted to be uh, and they kept coming back there so it was, it was it was a lovely session i was starting to see that um there was something special about this lake you know it began as somewhere to come when the fish were spawning on the island lake but um you know i was i was beginning to realize that this was somewhere i wanted to give a, a proper crack on its own merit First time back, I actually came into here in the helipad. You know, it was empty. Uh, again, good swim. I'd done well in it, so it's an obvious place to start. And fish were out there. Fish were showing out there quite close. And I remember one big mirror coming out, and I could see all the scales on it. It was an absolute belter for sure. Um, put a bag straight on its head, just cast a, a bag. But it was solid weed. The fish were showing over big, thick weed beds. And uh, yeah, it soon became obvious that the first two trips, I'd had something like 20 runs on the two separate three dayers that I'd done. Uh, that was a little bit misleading, I think. You know, I, I was expecting to come back and, and get a bit more action. And yeah, it soon became obvious that um, the normal fishing isn't quite like that. And yeah, I, I actually struggled a bit. You know, I was seeing fish, uh, putting baits on them, and not getting bites that was the that was the strange thing it was quite frustrating because uh you know when you see these big things lumping out where you're fishing and you're looking at your rods waiting for it to go off and it doesn't you think hold on a minute <laughs> something's something's changed here something is not quite the same as what it was so i had a, a little period where i started moving around the lake with the barra all the fishing on here is done off the barra so it's it's nice and mobile fishing you know i was traveling as light as possible and yeah i I've, was fishing all around the lake really had a few nights in a swim called uh trudy's uh i'd gone right around the other side of the lake to starry's uh in the corner and each time i was seeing fish i was getting on fish trouble was uh each time i wasn't getting the bites it, it was um yeah, try, uh, frustrating thing. I was trying different things. Uh, I, I'd moved on to pop-ups for a little bit uh, and then tiger nut hook baits. You're allowed to use tigers as hook baits, but not as freebies. So uh, I had a couple of nights trying them over the seed and the pellet. Uh, that, that didn't work. And yeah, so I, I, I probably racked up about six, seven nights chasing fish around on the barra trying different things uh, and I was on fish every time but not getting them basically but what I did find myself doing when I thought about it I was fishing spots where other people had sort of told me about and where other people fished all the time and it's not really my way of doing things you know as much as it's nice to get advice off people and learn things most of the times when I do put things together and I have any runs of success, 
it's it's when I've done my own thing, when I've found, found my own spots and done my own fishing and all that. So, you know, I did think that I, I was <laughs> I was starting to follow other people looking for clues and getting away from what I really do sort of naturally myself. So, yeah, I decided just to go back to me basic methods what I've been using all along you know the the slip D and the snowman stick with that because I knew that that worked for me everywhere and start looking for my own spots as well finding my own spots do my own fishing and yeah I just hope that that would uh, lead to me putting some fish on the bank again <laughs> Now I came back into a helipad again. I'd heard the fish showing quite a bit around to me left. And you can't really get there. There was no one fishing there, but you can't really get to there from here. So I thought, yeah, I'll have a reel in for a bit, have a little wander around, see if I find any clues. And yeah, it didn't take long actually. I got around the corner and uh, yeah, there was a patch of fish there. And um, I hadn't seen that elsewhere. I'd seen fish showing. Uh, but these were definitely fish feeding and uh, yeah, that was, that was a light bulb moment if you like, um, but it didn't take me long to get round there. <laughs> well, I've just come round the corner here and I'm only set up just round there in helipad, but I've just looked here and there's a bit of fizzing out there. And uh, I've heard fish jumping the last couple of nights, I've heard fish jumping out there. And now I've seen a bit of fizzing, so yeah, I've got to go and get my gear. So I'm going to race around, grab my gear, and uh, get a rod out here quick, I think. Well, talk about one minute in the right place. I've literally just moved from helipad to dog four and uh, saw some fizzing out there. I haven't even got my bank sticks in, but I, I shipped one out quickly with the bushwhacker. And uh, before I could even get the bank sticks in, I saw the line peeling off the spool and I've had one. Scaly mirror. There we go. Well, how about that? That's a quick start, and there's more there. I don't know if you 
see that fizzing out there like good. Might even get another rod out before I sort this fish out. Right. Yeah, get the rod out, I think. Well, this is getting silly now because I thought I'd get my other rod back out before I photographed the first one and literally within seconds it's gone off again uh, with another one and that's, that's, a, yeah, that's a bigger one than the first one. It's a good fish, very nice mirror. Well, two fish in 10 minutes. I still haven't got the only thing I've got out is my rods and the bushwhacker. Well, I'll say it again 10 minutes in the right place, it's better than two days in the wrong place. That's absolutely crazy. Right, I'm not going to put any more rods out until I've done these. That's mad, but great. Two lovely fish, happy days. God, what a mad half hour that was! Blimey. Well, I've just put them back actually, but um, I know that the battery went on the mic, so I've got no sound. Uh, so, just to talk you through it, the first one, oh, I was so pleased to get that. 25 and a half mirror that was, and uh, I literally just dropped the bait on its head, and uh, the take come within probably a minute, literally a minute, I hadn't even got the bank sticks in. So, uh, as soon as I got that one in the net, I thought, right chip the pole out, get the other rod out on the spot before I photograph the fish <laughs> and then that one went off as well so uh, yeah that one felt bigger all along and sure enough 43 and a half that was so yeah one of, one of the crackers of the lake, beautiful fish and uh, yeah so I literally just shipped it out dropped it on its head very gently, a little small lead, a little bag to float down and uh, yeah you know, if you get it in quietly enough and quickly enough, you know, you can get a bite quick. That's the important thing. And, uh, yeah, not only once, but twice. Next time down, and I, I look straight into the same swim where I'd had them two fish, you know, for obvious reasons. It's, you've got to have a look there, haven't you? And uh, sure enough, I did see a little bit of fizzing, so yeah, I thought maybe, maybe lightning's going to strike twice, and uh, yeah, got myself in there, but um, whatever little bit of fizzing there was soon stopped, and yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty dead in there after that there was no fish showing there was no signs and just a flat surface without a ripple on it you know so i was looking for a move really I'm, I'm quite keen to get on the move if things ain't happening i'd rather try and make things happen and try and get on fish somewhere else and as i learned from them previous two you know it only takes 10 minutes in the right spot as long as you can find that right spot Oh, it was a proper stormy night last night. 
actually had to get out and peg all the bivvy down again. It was uh, still blown a bit now, but um, yeah, it was dead though. Laneys had a couple over the other side, one good one. Um, but the good news is, I just walked down to Dog One, which is down the car park there, and I see a great big lump show just a few yards from the bank. So that's going to be me. At least it's an easy move, just everything in the back of the van and just drive down there. So uh, yeah, that's going to be a bit of me. Right, rain's getting heavier, so I'm going to move. Right, I'm just getting the rods out first, really, before I do anything else. I've got one rod out, and where I see the fish was literally just down here. Great big head just come up and flopped over. So, for the time being, all I'm going to do is stick a couple of bags out and just literally just flick them down the edge, you know, until, until I see something else to go on. Few pellets, few boilies, some nice six mil scopet squids, and literally uh, just a, a great big bag. So it's enough. And the wind's absolutely been hacking into here. So I mean, it looks good anyway. And my swim have gone dead, so I definitely needed to have a move. And. Uh, I've only seen the one fish here, but if there's one, there's more. And the other thing is that it was a great big one. <laughs> so whatever it was, I'd love to catch it. And it, like I say, it was just out here, so... Yeah, so for now, until I see something else to go on, I'm just going to underarm flick it. just there and just hope they're still patrolling up and down that marginal shelf because they do like to come in when, when no one's in the swim you know until someone starts casting all over them and everything else they will come in very close I mean, look at it, you know, 1st of November today, so it's not, well, not the time of year that you'd expect them to be straight on the winds, but it's so mild, so mild, so, uh, but they are here, they're here, so, wow, well, look at it, looks bang on for it, doesn't it? sat here all day with fish showing in front of me and the last one's gone off
got one. Well, we got one. Second capture of this fish. So, uh, yeah, not exactly top of the list. <laughs> but, um, you know, after a hard couple of days fishing, to get one even if it is old wonky jobs pleased to see you mate well it's not been easy so I'm grateful for whatever comes along even if it is old wonky jobs there we go 2812 thank you darling <laughs> yeah, nice one. But uh, yeah, it just went hammering off out the blue. Thankfully, the wind's died down a bit and uh, it's not raining. But yeah, not a big one. Up a double. But a lovely scale one, so worth getting him out to show you. Yeah, so there we go. That's the fishing so far on here. And it's been great, I've really enjoyed it. You know, it's been challenging at times. You know, I've been around, I've fished a lot of different swims, been mobile, got myself on fish. And sometimes it's fell in my lap, you know, I've had fish in quick sort of succession. Other times it's been more tricky, but that's carp fishing, isn't it? You know, that's how it goes sometimes. But it is, has been really good. I've, I've loved every minute of it. And yeah, certainly for the future, the foreseeable future, this is going to be my UK fishing. And uh, I just hope I can get hold of a few more of them lovely big scaly mirrors in here. And a few of the commons, there's some lovely big commons, so one of them would be nice. Um, but it's been fun, I've enjoyed it, and yeah, I'll be doing a bit more of it in the future. So until then, I'll see you next time. <laughs>